Sure. So uh, actually, your, your, uh, your work here is a uh, marvelous formalization of ideas that Bob Trivers, a, an evolutionary biologist, put out about 40 years ago, sort of proving the, uh, the fact that we simply can't be uh, honest to ourselves about anything. And uh, so you did a great job of, I think, formalizing uh, how much you actually gain by just being self-deceptive. But what Trivers was really excited about is the possibility that cheaters are generally cheaters. So the, the key question here is, are the people who cheat on their diets also cheating on their wives and husbands? What do you think? Mm. <laughs> So first, I, I mean, I think that the next thing to do is to be able to figure out what the genotype for these cheaters are. And I think there's a lot of interesting correlations to behavior that can be made outside of this. Um, uh, I think potentially uh, uh, this sort of underestimation uh, of things that one wants could uh, end up being available to all, th all kinds of things in life, um, many of which they probably don't want to know about. Sure. So actually, related to that question, there is um, some evidence that people only have a certain limit of um, sort of tolerance that they can take each day. So they're kind of tested, and that is sort of depleted throughout the day in terms of if you resist eating a donut, then that's going to deplete a certain amount of your, I guess, resistance to, to bad things. So do you feel like the cheaters that were being exposed versus the suckers are a, a fixed population of people, or is it just that they were being exposed to more temptation? Uh, it could be that this is a subpopulation that has discovered uh, that the best way to deal with temptation is to yield to it, but not to admit that you've yielded to it. <laughs> So I have a two-part question. The first one is, uh, the people who are cheating and are self-deceptive, are they aware of this in any way, subconsciously? Possibly, but we suspect that uh, the, the potential, um, what is known of the people who, for example, underestimate, uh, it doesn't necessarily seem, it's not been correlated with uh, any, uh, any sort of conscious intention or, um, as, far as, as far as I know, executive function. So I'm suspecting that this is actually an evolved response where uh, the, just alone underestimating your calories is probably good under a lot of circumstances, just you get a lot of calories. Um, but also this ability, paired with that, this ability to select foodstuffs and say, oh my gosh, that's really awful, uh, and to convince everybody that it's really awful, and yourself, but at the same time maintain uh, eating it, is the advantage. I think it's those two paired that's really important. I see. So, so you're, you're, you're starting with a, a sort of a baseline population and adding cheaters to it to see how they rise up and are, are better at, at some strategy so that natural selection picks them. It's my understanding that there were quite a few people who applied to BAFES to give talks, and only a few of them were able to get above that baseline. <laughs> so what is it that you are self-deceiving about that puts you up here on stage? Related specifically to the talk, I have been a vegetarian for about 20 years. <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right. But to be honest, at this point, I'm not 100% sure. All right, big round of applause. 